So now that we have finished talking about the eye and vision, uh, we'll move on to um, another special sense, well, two special senses, hearing and equilibrium. They both take place within the ear, even though there are different organs responsible um, that house the receptors uh, for each hearing and equilibrium within the ear. Um, both of them use mechanoreceptors, so they're actually going to be sensing a change and some type of movement, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about the specifics. So looking at the ear, there are three main areas. We have the external or outer ear, and then the middle ear, which is also called the tympanic cavity, and then the inner ear, which is called the bony labyrinth, and this is going to be actually within um, bones of your skull. So here we have the external ear. You can see it highlighted in this area. And that's going to include the auricle or the pinna all the way through to the auditory canal or the external acoustic um, meatus, it's also called right there. Then the tympanic cavity or the middle ear is going to be this section and it is going to be an air-filled cavity. And then the inner ear is going to be this part that's actually buried within bone of your skull. Now, one of the differences between hearing and equilibrium is that hearing will utilize all three uh, divisions of the ear, whereas equilibrium is only going to be um, utilizing the inner ear. Um, so, like I just said, the external ear is only involved in hearing. Um, it is uh, the structure of the external ear. The auricle or the pinna uh, that's going to help funnel sound, so it travels actually into the auditory canal, which is um, more specifically called the external acoustic meatus. Um, it is a narrow chamber. Uh, it's lined with skin and ceruminous glands. Ceruminous glands are basically modified sweat glands, and um, they are modified in the form that they produce wax. It does serve a purpose. It helps to keep things from getting in your ear and um, especially things like bugs. If you've ever seen any of those shows on the Discovery Channel, sometimes um, people will go to the hospital because their ear is hurting really bad and it turns out they actually have a bug stuck in their ear. Um, so it is possible and that's one of the things that the wax is actually trying to help prevent. Um, and then it ends at the tympanic membrane and your tympanic membrane is just a more specific name for your eardrum. The middle ear, or the tympanic cavity, uh, like I said before, it is an air-filled space within um, the temporal bone, and it is only involved in the sense of hearing. Within that area, you will have the three smallest bones in your body, which together are called the auditory ossicles. There are two tubes that are associated with, associated with the inner ear. The first one, of course, is the one we just talked about, the auditory canal or the external acoustic meatus. And then the other tube is called the auditory tube, or more specifically, the eustachian tube. And this actually um, connects your middle ear to your pharynx, which is your throat. This is, um, normally, the tube is gonna be collapsed, but whenever you need to equalize pressure um, within your ears, it will actually expand to allow air to travel through. So this is one of the things that um, can happen when your ears are popping. Uh, that's one of the reasons why they say if you're on an airplane um, and your ears start popping because of the change in the outside pressure, uh, chewing gum and things like that can help because it'll help uh, allow the eustachian tube to actually um, stay open. Um, so that way your ears aren't popping and hurting. Uh, those three auditory ossicles that are uh, found within the tympanic cavity are called the malleus, the incus, and the states. And they are going to, um, sound will be transferred in that order, um, starting from the tympanic membrane. So the vibrations will vibrate your eardrum and it will cause a vibration in the malleus, which will then um, 
transfer that vibration to the incus, then to the stapes. And from the stapes, it will transfer uh, the vibrations to the inner ear. Now, you'll see next to these, it says the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. That's because of the shapes of those bones. They're commonly called those terms as well. So here you can see, here's um, our auditory canal. So the vibrations will travel through there, causing your eardrum to vibrate. So here's the hammer or the malleus, and then the incus, which is also called the anvil, and then the stapes kind of looks like a horseshoe. Um, so they are the three smallest bones in the body. And then when the stapes actually vibrate, it's going to transfer the vibration at this area right here uh, called the oval window. So that brings us to the inner ear, um, which is also called the bony labyrinth. It includes sense organs for both hearing and balance. It is filled with paralymph. So um, lymph is going to be fluid. We'll talk about it more when we talk about the lymphatic system. But it's basically fluids that have leaked out from uh, your bloodstream. Um, it, the reason why it's called a bony labyrinth, the labyrinth is like a maze. So it's a maze of bony cham uh, chambers, and it is also within the temporal bone. And um, those bony chambers are called the cochlea the vestibule, and the semicircular canals. So here you can see, there we are. So here you can see the semicircular canals. The vestibule is gonna be this area. And then the part that looks kinda like the uh, snail shell is gonna be the cochlea. So looking at the organs of equilibrium, equilibrium, um, people don't really think of that as a special sense, but it absolutely is. Um, it has very sensitive receptors that are specific and um, allowing you to determine kind of what your body's doing at a given time. Um, like I said, the receptors are found in the inner ear uh, within the vestibular apparatus, so that is the vestibule. Uh, there are two functional parts of the vestibular apparatus, um, static equilibrium and dynamic equilibrium. If things are static, that means it's kind of like you're staying the same, and dynamic equilibrium is looking at movements. So here we have the vestibule and the semicircular canals. And if you look at this area that we zoom in right here where the semicircular canals actually connect to the vestibule, so that's the box we're zoomed in on. Within the uh, semicircular canals, um, so outside of this area you have the paralymph, inside you have the endolymph, so like indoor, and right here in this area you have what's called the crista ampullaris. And um, that's called the cupula, which is kind of like um, in churches and cathedral type churches. The area, um, the cupula is going to be that area that goes up really high and kind of has a domed ceiling. So looking at static equilibrium, the receptors are in the vestibule. And basically, they're going to be reporting the position of your head. If you close your eyes, you know exactly um, if you're up right, if you're upside down, if you're laying down on the side, and mainly that's because of um, your static equilibrium receptors. Um, you have hair cells that are going to be embedded within this membrane called the autolithic membrane, and in that membrane you have these little tiny stones called autoliths, and um, the autolithic membrane is a kind of a gelatinous membrane, and so whenever these autoliths um, move because of the position of your head, it's going to cause those hair cells to actually bend and will trigger an impulse to your brain, kind of letting you know the position of your head. So looking at this area right here, these are going to be those hair cells. So these are the hairs that are branching up. These are the otoliths or those little tiny stones. And on the next slide, you'll notice so here's the autolithic membrane. So when your head is upright, the autoliths or those little tiny stones will be kind of hanging around up there. 
Well, whenever you lean your head forward, it's going to cause, uh, gravity is going to pull that membrane down. And so whenever those stones are pulled in that direction, it's going to cause these hair cells to bend, therefore reporting the position um, of your head to your brain. We'll finish up with dynamic equilibrium and then we'll be done. So dynamic equilibrium um, is going to, um, the receptors are in the semicircular canals. Uh, once again, you're going to have hair cells with the gelatinous cap over them. And so now when we have endolymph flowing, depending on how your body is moving, it's going to cause the cupula to bend one way or the other. Uh, it's kind of like and it's always going to cause it to go in the opposite direction. It's kind of like if you're turning left, it makes your body lean to the right. So it's the same concept. So if your body is moving in this direction, then the endolymph is going to flow in this direction, causing movement of that cupula and the hair cells. And uh, so it's going to tell, tell you the angular um, movements of your head. Um, and of course, it's going to send the impulse through the vestibular nerve uh, to your cerebellum. And we will continue with hearing later.